Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. A policeman has waited 27 years to catch a space-time criminal who is terrorizing an entire city. But the shocking truth about the criminal's identity drives him to despair. Today we will recap the 2019 movie In the Shadow of the Moon. Philadelphia, the year 2024. There are riots all over the city, resulting in terrible destruction and engulfing the streets in chaos. The story begins 36 years earlier, in 1988, when a series of mysterious crimes take place in the city. People who seem to be completely unrelated at first glance are all passing away in the same manner. At first, they all begin to bleed red fluid profusely, after which they suddenly depart from this world. Later that night, patrol cop Thomas Lockhart wakes up in his house in order to start his night shift. His beloved wife is in her final month of pregnancy and he attentively prepares pancakes for her before leaving for work. He gets distracted by the bell and the pancakes burn, setting off the fire alarm. The pregnant girl is eagerly eating the burnt pancakes and tells her husband about a disturbing dream in which she was drowning in the sea and could not save herself. She worries about Thomas's night shifts, but he is determined to become a detective and is willing to work hard for it. He promises his wife that things will change as soon as he gets a promotion. Lockhart steps into the car with his partner Maddox and they drive out to the scene of an accident that is all over the news. A bus driver has lost consciousness, causing a catastrophic accident at a busy intersection in the city. Upon arriving on the scene, Thomas rushes over to the investigators and eagerly examines the scene of the accident. He discovers that the wounds on the victim's body do not resemble the usual shrapnel wounds, and there are puncture marks on her neck. In addition, for some unknown reason, the woman's brains have oozed out. The policeman's brother-in-law, Detective Holt, initially pays no attention to his observations, but he soon receives reports of similar accidents occurring in different parts of the city. All of the victims had bled red fluid through their noses, ears, and mouths, and suspicious marks were also seen on their necks. The detective is forced to admit that the events are connected and this may be a case of a serial criminal. Thomas is filled with enthusiasm and believes that this case is his opportunity to become a detective. But Maddox is not thrilled with this idea and would rather disperse homeless people on the streets than to track down the real villains. Nevertheless, they head out to the second crime scene, where a famous pianist has suddenly bled red liquid right in the middle of a performance. Holt is two steps behind his brother-in-law and arrives late to examine the victims. Another man is found in the kitchen of a diner, his brain has leaked out in the same way, and there are punctures around his neck exactly like the other victims. Thomas believes there is a pattern to these crimes and suggests that Holt test the bodies for toxins. The detective reminds his brother-in-law that this is his case and he is the one who intends to get all the credit for solving it. But Lockhart does not intend to give up so easily and persuades his partner to go to the morgue to get the autopsy report. The medical examiner tells the police that the report has already been ordered by Detective Holt. However, Thomas manages to get the doctor to speak to them and they manage to learn that the victims were administered a lethal injection of an unknown substance. The partners make a stop to buy something to eat in the eastern neighborhood of the city and discuss the unusual case. Maddox assures his comrade that once the baby arrives, his life will change and he will no longer be so obsessed with solving crimes. Remembering his pregnant wife, Thomas buys her a beautiful bracelet with an infinity symbol. The police officers are radioed about a new assault victim with similar wounds on his neck. Upon learning that the victim is still alive, they immediately dispatch to the scene of the crime. The police officers find themselves in a nightclub filled with a variety of assorted freaks. The local patrolman does not take the victim's statement seriously, as cases of violence are not uncommon here. The wounded girl shows Thomas the typical puncture wound on her neck and describes her attacker as a young African-American woman in a blue hoodie with an injured left arm. Detective Holt also arrives on the scene and begins a second interrogation, ignoring Lockhart's request to take the victim to the hospital. All of a sudden, the girl collapses in a daze and red fluid begins oozing out of her eyes, nose and ears. After that, Holt organizes a large-scale manhunt for the African-American girl in the blue hooded sweatshirt. The police take into custody dozens of African-American women who match even vaguely the description of the suspect. Meanwhile, the real perpetrator tries to break into a car, but is scared off by one of the police patrol officers. While trying to flee into the crowd, the suspect accidentally bumps into Lockhart and Maddox's car. For a moment she stares into Thomas's face in surprise, then runs over the roof of the car and disappears into an alley. Lockhart backs up to catch up with the girl, and Maddox radio her location to his colleagues. Holt orders the entire county police force to go to that location. In pursuit of the suspect, Lockhart pulls into the roadway and their car nearly collides with a truck. The two partners then split up and pursue the girl on their own, trapping her in a subway station. Thomas is radioed that his wife has gone into labor, but he is too preoccupied with catching the criminal and fails to hear the important message. Maddox is the first to discover the suspect and tells her to turn herself in. The young woman attacks the policeman and breaks his leg during the struggle. 
Thomas rushes in following his partner's screams and confronts the criminal face to face. The girl is not afraid of the police officer and even calls him by his name. She tells him details of his personal life, including that his wife will give birth on this day. The girl apologizes to Thomas for what is going to happen to Maddox. She knocks the bewildered policeman's gun out of his hands and overpowers him in the fight. The young suspect then handcuffs Lockhart to a bench, but he manages to strike her in the leg with a stun gun. The sharp pain causes the girl to lose her balance and be struck by the passing train. Lockhart is dumbfounded by her sudden departure, but the losing the prime suspect turns out not to be the most frightening event of this long night. After learning from a colleague that his wife is in labor, he rushes to the hospital. There he is met by one of the investigators, who wants to question him about the deceased suspect. The young woman cannot be identified by fingerprints and had no identification with her. All that was found on her was a set of keys found in her pocket. All of Thomas's thoughts are occupied with his wife, so he does not respond to the information the police officer tells him. The investigator asks Lockhart to show his revolver, since a bullet was found in the victim's wrist that matches a service weapon. Thomas assures his colleague that he did not fire his weapon. In the emergency room, he is informed that his wife has had complications in childbirth. He bursts into the hospital room to see his beloved and puts the bracelet on her arm, trying to reassure her. The young woman smiles, but a moment later she loses consciousness and Thomas is chased out of the room. Long moments of waiting pass and a healthy baby girl is born. The doctor approaches Lockhart and Holt and informs them that the baby girl's mother has passed away in childbirth. Nine years pass. Despite all the conflicting information, the police close the case of the serial offender in the blue hoodie. On the anniversary of the passing away of the African-American suspect, mass protests against police brutality and racial discrimination erupt in the city. Little Amy, Thomas's daughter, makes ice cream pancakes for him. Lockhart himself hesitates to leave the room for a long time, grappling with the anniversary of his beloved's decease. In honor of her ninth birthday, he gives Amy a bracelet pendant. Before going to the zoo, they go to her mother's cemetery to place flowers on her grave. To Lockhart's surprise, someone has already left a fresh bouquet and a seashell beside the headstone. Thomas receives a call from work informing him that a certain copycat is committing the same crimes the girl in the hood did nine years ago. Lockhart has made detective, just as he dreamed, but despite this, he still cannot find any motive or connection between the victims. Thomas leaves Amy in the care of a policewoman, and he goes with Maddox to the crime scene. He asks his partner if he left flowers on his wife's tombstone, to which he answers in the negative. They are joined by Lieutenant Holt, who has not yet visited his sister's grave either. After determining that the victim has injection marks on his body, the cops review the surveillance tapes. They are surprised to find that the copycat is dressed exactly like the suspect nine years ago. Lockhart urges the department to withhold the reopening of the case from the public in order to minimize racial tension, but Holt disagrees. Thomas retrieves some old evidence from the investigation and sends the suspect's keys to be analyzed. Meanwhile, Holt unveils the security footage and promises a full investigation, which leads to a new outbreak of unrest. The number of the copycat's victims increases, and Lockhart and Maddox try unsuccessfully to find anything that will bring them any closer to apprehending her. Reviewing the camera footage again, Thomas notices that the perpetrator's left arm is bandaged. The detective begins questioning whether the new crimes are the work of a copycat. Nine years ago, police officers concealed from the public the fact that the black suspect had been shot in the arm and no one could have known about it. Thomas' suspicions are intensified when an analysis of the keys found in the perpetrator's possession in 1988 arrives. It turns out that these keys are being used for an airplane that was manufactured in 1996, eight years after the suspect was no more. Obsessed with solving this unusual case, Lockhart is about to venture out to the airfield where this particular model of airplane is available. He completely forgets about Amy, who did not manage to get her holiday trip to the zoo. A physicist named Naveen Rao comes to the police station. He insists that the crimes have some connection with the phases of the moon and are proof of time travel, but Lockhart and Maddox ignore his arguments. The two partners make it to the airfield, but Maddox refuses to go any further with him. The events from nine years ago have not gone well for him and he is left with a limp. Thomas climbs the enclosed fence himself and enters the hangar, where there are lights on. Inside he finds the manager, who is obviously very agitated about something. With the help of a note, the man signals to the detective that they are not alone on the premises. However, the girl reveals her own presence and points a gun at the policeman. Thomas is shocked to see the suspect in front of him from 1988, who is alive and also young. The girl orders the manager to tie Lockhart to a chair, but the detective manages to discreetly dial his partner's number. Hearing the approaching signals of police cars, the female perpetrator takes Thomas hostage. Maddox sneaks up on them unnoticed and the girl shoots him in the head out of surprise. The female criminal drags Lockhart into the plane, where he loses consciousness. He dreams of his pregnant wife, who was suddenly hit by a train. 
When the detective regains consciousness, his abductress reveals some details about her life. Every nine years at the setting of the moon, she can briefly go back in time to dispose of certain people. After her words, Thomas has many more questions, but the young woman tells him to cease and stop following her. She then pushes Lockhart out of the plane, ending up successfully landing in the sea. Upon reaching the shore, he discovers the crashed plane, but the woman criminal is no longer inside. In the morning, Holt arrives at the crash site together with an investigation team. He reprimands his brother-in-law for putting his life in danger and laments Maddox's death. Thomas tells Holt that a further search for the suspected woman is pointless, as she has gone back to the future. The year is 2006. Lockhart is now a private investigator who has decided to devote his life to solving the case. He leads an isolated life and only occasionally keeps in touch with his teenage daughter Amy, who lives with her uncle Holt. For a long time now, Thomas has tried unsuccessfully to contact Professor Naveen Rao, who has gone into private practice. He speculates that the physicist was right and time travel is somehow part of the crimes after all. While searching for new evidence one night, he unearths the grave of Harold Novak, a victim of the events of 1988, whose incident, for some unknown reason, was not tied to the investigation. The following day, he visits Harold's widow to learn more about the man's life. The woman tells him that her husband was the leader of a radical group. For a small fee, she gives the investigator a list of addresses to which Harold used to send newsletters. After studying them, Thomas realizes that the victims were all connected to political extremism. Lockhart picks Amy up from school to spend some time with her on her birthday. An awkward conversation ensues between them and Thomas discovers that his daughter has a boyfriend. Amy finds evidence in her father's car about the African-American suspect case and realizes that he is still obsessed with her. Thomas gives his daughter a new pendant, but she disappointedly tells her father that she hasn't worn the bracelet in years. Before she leaves, she begs her father to stop and forget about the 18-year-old case. After some time, Thomas meets Holt at a coffee shop and tells him about his own investigation and the possibility of time travel. He is convinced that the young woman from the future must return again sometime today and must be tracked down. Holt dismisses all of his crazy theories and insists that he should consult a psychiatrist for help. Lockhart plays out a scene of regret and quietly steals Holt's police badge. He then uses it to find out the address of the white radical leader's ex-girlfriend. When Thomas arrives at the place, he discovers the breathless body of the housewife. The suspected woman has returned again, having disposed of another member of the radical group. In pursuit of the girl, Lockhart discharges his weapon and wounds her in the left arm. However, she continues to flee and rides away on a motorcycle. Thomas then hijacks a jeep and continues to pursue the suspect, seeking answers to all of his questions. The young woman leads him into an abandoned building and, thanks to the maneuverability of the motorcycle, buys herself some time. Lockhart doesn't stop and continues to run after the girl by foot. She ditches her vehicle in the middle of the beach and disappears into some bushes. Thomas notices a sewage pipe concealed among the brushwood and enters a secret location through it. The suspect is confined inside a time capsule, which gradually becomes filled with water. The young woman watches sadly as Lockhart tries desperately to open the door of the pod. He then tells her that they will meet again, and a moment later, the female suspect dissolves into thin air along with a time machine. Exhausted from the pursuit, the man makes his way out of the sewer pipe, where he is immediately apprehended by Holt. With a distraught look, Thomas assures his brother-in-law that he must wait nine more years to finally deal with the suspect. At that point, he would be able to undo the past and be there for his wife to save her from passing away. Professor Rao, who has also discovered the location of the time machine, is watching from the top of a cliff. The story shifts to the year 2015. Naveen Rao is experimenting on pigs, injecting them one after another into their necks. For years he has been in hiding and developing a substance capable of destroying objects at a distance. Finally, his experiments yielded results. The professor has been waiting nine years to meet the time traveler in person. With the help of a hidden camera, he learns that Thomas is also eager to meet the female suspect and has already set up a tent near the entrance to the sewer. Amy leaves a message on Thomas's phone announcing that she is pregnant and will soon give birth. Although they have barely spoken all these years, the girl wants to have her father present at her birth. Rao shows up on the beach and kidnaps Thomas in order to prevent Lockhart from attacking the young woman once again. Thomas wakes up in the scientist's vehicle, next to the inanimate pigs. Rao informs him that he is going to confine him to a safe house for a few days so that he will not interfere with his mission. He now believes the suspect's actions are justified and considers her a savior, not a criminal. He perceives the necessary ruthlessness of destroying certain individuals in the past in order to prevent tragic events in the future. After all, it is not only important to take out the leader of the revolts, but also all the people who made him a leader. While Rao delves into philosophical musings, Lockhart discreetly disposes of his shackles with a pig's fang. He attacks Professor Rao and grabs his gun from him. 
Their confrontation leads to an accident and Thomas manages to escape his captor. Trapped in the car, the professor shoots after him and begs him to let the young woman finish what she started. Lockhart returns to the beach, where he meets the time traveler. He is sure that by defeating her now, he will stop himself from chasing after her for years in the past. He would return to his family and erase all the events that have blighted his life. However, the young woman assures him that her departure will lead to terrible consequences that will plunge the world into chaos. Thomas points his weapon toward her, determined to complete what he has begun. At this point, the young woman finally decides to reveal the whole truth about herself. She explains to Lockhart that she has known him her entire life and that it was he who convinced her to find and dispose of certain people from the past. He also taught her how to ride a bicycle, made her pancakes and ice cream, and held her in his arms the day she was born. After hearing this, Thomas is at a loss for words. The young woman shows him her mother's bracelet and introduces herself as Rhea. She is Lockhart's granddaughter and the offspring of his daughter Amy's interracial love. The man lowers his weapon and tells the girl that he pushed her in front of the train unintentionally 27 years ago. He begs for her to go back in time again and stop him from doing so. However, these events have already happened and there is no way Rhea can stop them. She travels back in time, appearing every nine years in chronological order. On her current visit, the events from 1988 to 2007 have not yet occurred, and her hand is not yet injured. Thomas collapses exhausted to the ground, tormented by guilt over the demise of his granddaughter. Before leaving on a mission, Rhea requests that he take care of her and her mother. Lockhart screams in pain, understanding what he has done. In the future, Rhea retrieves an injection with a lethal substance from the hands of the aging professor Naveen Rao. As she sets out on her first mission, she recalls the year 2024, when the first terrorist attack by the radical group took place. The ensuing civil war claimed the lives of millions and turned people into violence-hungry terrorists seeking reprisals. The beginnings of the war go back to 1988, when the first radical group was conceived by Harold Novak. In the future, Professor Rao found a way to prevent these tragic events from happening and invented a time machine. Rao volunteered to erase history and eradicate the idea of rebellion in its infancy. Lockhart, convinced that her actions are just, gives her permission to take on this mission and perform these offenses. By taking care of the last member of the group, she manages to prevent a civil war. The horrific events of 2024 would never materialize. As for the events of 2015, Thomas Lockhart arrives at the hospital and is reunited with his family. He welcomes the newborn baby girl into his arms, who in the future will sacrifice herself to save the world. But before they both become warriors, Rhea and Thomas have wonderful years together, full of love and care. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.